Standard dynamic range versus HDR, what are the benefits you will get? Many would say that HDR TVs and monitor is totally different from HDR photography or videography. This is not entirely true as both share the similar benefit and the purpose in the end. Now to understand HDR is to look from a photography perspective which can be applied to movie contents and HDR hardware later on. Now a single HDR image can be produced from a single uncompressed raw file or multiple stacks of raw file combined in post-production. The purpose of using raw file is because it has more information than a typical JPEG so you can stretch the file further by boosting the shadows and controlling or pulling back the highlights and adding fine details and colors to it. Compared to a typical JPEG, a HDR image has better dynamic range or more stops of light. This means a smoother gradient between the brightest whites to the darkest of black. Also, it retains better color and details at the mid areas of the brights as well as in the shadow areas as well. Now, so this is subjective but it falls true. Now, if you boost the contrast level on the HDR image, it does not crush the highlights and the darks too much compared to a typical JPEG. And this is what all that I mentioned earlier the JPEG can't do well. Now bring this concept to HDR TV or monitor which promise better dynamic range, exposure, color, vibrancy, contrast boost, black levels. This is something that has been promoted heavily by all manufacturers. In short, the ultimate goal of this hardware is to show you guys and feature a hyper-realistic lifelike look. For HDR TV and monitor to work, you do need a supported HDR player as well as a HDR content. This comes in the form of Blu-ray disc which supports bigger file size or higher bitrate or online streaming sites like Netflix that supports HDR content right now so you can Netflix and chill. Again, HDR and SDR differ greatly from one and another. SDR still uses the older color standard which is the RAC 709 which has limited dynamic range and a smaller color gamut palette. Now, I cover color government in another knowledge video, links in the description below, so you can check out that. So in summary, it looks a little bit more muted when it comes to contrast, color, vibrancy, as well as a little bit underexposed. Now again, HDR benefits, gives you all the goodiness, but it comes in the bigger file size. The reason is it gives more color information and exposure information so you can have a hyper realistic lifelike look. Again, you may need a bigger storage size and also a faster internet to support HDR content. Many may argue that you can boost saturation level and also control shadow detail levels like you find on a typical gaming monitor. I agree, but those experience is never and not even identical to true HDR content on true HDR hardware. This is like Rick and Morty true level experience. If you want to go HDR all the way, you have to go full all out HDR. Now again, HDR is still at its infant stage with multiple confusing formats like HDR10, HDR10+, variants like HLG. There's one with BBC and NHK um, TV broadcast also doing their HDR format. There's even games that supports different level of HDR, some ex, uh, supports exposure, some support color, some supports details. It's still a confusing thing. We will only see in the next three to five years for HDR to fully mature and to be exactly what it is. And more hardware then will support HDR content and playbacks. So thank you for watching this video. Comment below what other knowledge video we should do next and explain. I also have other knowledge video links in the description video. More importantly, you should check out panels and also color comment, uh, comparison that would actually help you understand all this, this knowledge stuff better. And remember to like and subscribe and see you guys.